Coming up on Hands on iOS, I'm gonna show you one of the easiest ways to take control of your health data, to get access to your health records, have it at your beck and call at any point. So stay tuned, you're gonna to wanna to check this out. Hands on iOS is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by Simply Safe. Everything you need in a home security system. Go to simplysafe.com slash twit and get free shipping and a 60 day money back guarantee. Hey folks, it is now more than ever a time where we want to make sure that we have control of our health data, that we have access to it, that we know what's going on and when it's going on. If you visit your doctor in person or if you're doing online calls, how do you get access to that those health records, that, that bit of information that your doctor is taking notes on during your appointments or uh, information about your tests that you've taken, the results of those, those different health tests and things like that, your medications, all sorts of health information is out there. And oftentimes it requires you going to the online portal or visiting the doctor themselves and getting that information in that way. But there is a simpler way for many of you. If your health record system has integrated with Apple's health kit, then it becomes super simple for you to gain access to those health records. And I want to talk about that today because it's honestly one of my favorite features in all of iOS. So let's take a look. All right. So as you might imagine, we are going to go to the health app. So I'll tap on the health app and you can see a summary of some of the information that I've had over the course of uh, the past month or so. But what I want to do is choose browse and I want to scroll down until I get to health records. So the first part of the information shows you your current health records. I'm not gonna pop in there because it has a lot of my personal health information, including uh, medical allergies I might have, my vitals, my conditions, etc., cetera, uh, including medications and lab results. So all of your information is stored within this area. Now here's the cool thing. In most cases, your health records system is part of a standardized system across the entire uh, spectrum of the health industry. Uh, of course, a long time ago, because of the different regulations that we have in place in the United States and elsewhere, we are we are meant to be given access. We are we are allowed to have access, and in fact, your health uh, providers are required to give you access to your health data. Uh, and because of that, the health industry realized that an easier way to make this happen is if they have a standardized file system, a way to not only store but display health data. And because of this, many different systems can easily integrate with your uh, health records portion of the health app from iOS, or from Apple rather. So that is why uh, my allergies, my immunizations, my medications and all those things are easily accessible because of that standardized file. So underneath the, the main section of the health records, you'll see that there are different accounts here. If I were to tap on all accounts, what that would do is show me the most recent information that my health providers have sent to me, or have rather updated to their systems uh, in, in the past period of time. So for example, uh, my current health provider is Kaiser Permanente. So if I were to tap on all accounts, then the topmost data point would be something from Kaiser Permanente. These other platforms are systems, uh, health medical systems that I was a part of before, and so they are also included in the list. Now, if you are uh, wanting to add your own health records information to your phone so that you can access it at any time and get the updates as soon as that information is uploaded to the system that your doctor has, then you're gonna to wanna to tap on add account. So I'll tap on add account, and this is a location-based searching system. So it discovers where you are, you can give it permission to access your location, it discovers where you are, and then it will provide you the suggested hospitals, networks, or locations nearest to you. Now, I've already added Kaiser Permanente of Northern California as one of my uh, systems, but 
I also happen to have a Quest Diagnostics account. So I'm going to choose Quest Diagnostics. And you can see here, uh, depending on the platform, there may be multiple different versions or systems that you can connect within Quest Diagnostics or whatever option you happen to choose. So for me, it shows the one that is available to connect is MyQuest. I tap on MyQuest to connect to the account and it goes to a website, uh, to their API. And at this point, I'm going to type in my username and password. So I'm going to cut away. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by Simply Safe. They believe that simple home security is safer. It's easy to use and protects your home 24 7. You can order online, open the box, and place the sensors and plug it in, and your home is protected around the clock. No technician or salesperson comes to your house, and there are no outrageous monthly fees or two year contracts. None of that. Just head to simplysafe.com slash twit and get free shipping and a 60 day money back guarantee. That's simplysafe.com slash twit to make sure they know that our show sent you. And you can see that it says, okay. Uh, this app is not created by Quest Diagnostics, and what you're doing is you're allowing Apple to have access to, th to this information. Is that okay? I choose Allow Access, and then it says, look, Quest Diagnostics has been added to your system. And then it may take a minute for those records to download. And then I will get a notification at some point that says new health records are available to you. So depending on whether you've been part of a system for a long time or a short period of time or have many, many, many records or very few records, you may see those records update a lot quicker or a lot slower. So for me with Quest Diagnostics, I don't have many health records as part of the system. So it quickly downloads those and makes them available to me. Now, the cool thing is, Anytime your doctor goes in and makes changes or updates, uh, you will get a notification saying that there are new records available. Uh, because I take a medication regularly, uh, this is one example. Every time my doctor re-prescribes that medication to me, I will get a notification within the health app letting me know that my records have been updated. I can go in, make sure that it's the right medication, and then soon after that, I'll get the notification from my pharmacy saying that it's ready for me to go. But... This goes farther than that. You have access to so much more information. You have access to uh, any medical procedures you may have had, any lab results, medications. I mean, it. the list goes on and on. And that is what makes this so helpful because I've found that anytime I've had to go... Uh, get ready with a new doctor. Anytime, you know, I moved from Missouri to California, for example, and setting up my health records with my new doctor involved me needing to list my current medications and talk about previous conditions or previous procedures. And so having all that information ready and available to me in these places made it very easy to do so. Uh, that is one reason why you want to have this information. But again, another reason is simply the fact that you will always have that updated information when it's available. Now, I have to say that there is the case that your medical uh, provider may not offer the health records integration, in which case, unfortunately, you have to wait until they do provide that. But by choosing Add Account and doing a search for the, uh, the network, then you will be able to dis determine if your network is one of those that's available. So I, you know, I can scroll through and see some that are near me. And as I mentioned, it does list it in order of location from where you are, but you can update it however you choose. I'll tap cancel because I've got those all plugged in. And then let's talk about how you go about removing uh, a, a health records option. Say you've moved systems and your new healthcare provider has already uh, pulled over all of your information from your previous healthcare provider, so you don't want duplicates in your system. Well, it's very simple to do. Uh, either from the summary tab or from the browse tab, I can tap on my avatar in the top right corner of the screen. So that's my face there. And it pulls up my health uh, details. That's my health profile, medical ID, whether I'm an organ donor, and then accounts like health records. I tap on health records. And then I tap on University of Missouri Healthcare, for example, and I can go in and choose remove account. So by tapping on remove account, it'll say, hey, it's going to remove this account and delete the data. Uh, when I tap that again, it will give you one more prompt to say it's also going to remove it from other devices that are synced via iCloud. 
and then you tap it to confirm that you want to remove it. Now you'll notice with this one too, I'm currently signed out. Uh, depending on the platform, they will log you out every once in a while so that you have to re-log in and reconfirm that you are a part of the system. It's just the way to make sure that even if you don't go in and make those updates, that those updates are available at any time. So it's, or that those updates are not available at any time rather. So that that information is not uh, staying logged in if you do change your account or something like that. It's just a security precaution. So I would go and choose sign in. It would take me to the page. I would log in again, no problem. And then it would pull down my health records. So again, just tapping on my avatar in the top right corner takes me to the page where I choose health records, and then I can go in and remove them as I so choose. So pop open the health app, scroll down, choose add account, and look for your health records account to add to your phone. A very simple, very quick tip, but one that I think is so incredibly important. And in fact, if your healthcare provider does not currently offer this integration and you are an iPhone user, I suggest that you reach out to them and ask them when that integration is going to be made available. Having this information on your phone is empowering. It means that you always have access to your health data, which you should. It shouldn't be locked away in some website that's difficult to access in multiple tabs, trying to pull all of your information. Apple makes it very easy and organizes it so simply so you always have the information about what medical procedures you've had done, what uh, immunizations you've had done, and even pulls in, uh, for example, in lab results. It will even pull in information about where you should be, where the standard is for the human body on different results. So if you had your cholesterol measured and, and uh, a lipid panel measured, it would show you what the standard uh, rates are and where you fall within that. So you're getting more information than maybe you would even get from your doctor without asking the right questions. It's so handy and so helpful to have access to all of that. And I can't tell you how empowering it feels to know exactly what's going on with my body and know at any given moment what the results of different tests or uh, different procedures that I've had done are and to be reminded of that and have access to that at any time. So I do appreciate you checking out this episode of Hands on iOS. Of course, if you have questions or you have topics that you want me to cover, it's so simple. All you have to do is email us. It's handsonios at twit.tv. Yes, that will send your topic suggestions to me. And of course, please do subscribe to the show if you aren't currently. Uh, it's twit.tv slash HOI, which of course stands for Hands on iOS. That's where you can go to subscribe to the show in all of its formats, audio and video, no matter what platform you happen to be on. And youtube.com slash Hands on iOS will also get you there. Of course, if you're already here on YouTube, then please do hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, hit that like button, all those things. And uh, I do appreciate you for checking out this episode of Hands on iOS. I'll be back next week with so much more. So until then, goodbye. Be sure to check out the other shows on the network, like my other show, Hands On Wellness. I love to share different tips and tricks that's going to help you get a better grasp on your personal wellness. Just go to twit.tv slash how and subscribe now.